Talk no jutsu. That's basically what this chapter was in a nutshell. It's kind of like, you know, when you play Super Smash Bros and you win, you hear a voice that says, Congratulations! And Kirby's like jumping around, just flapping his freaking little arms and shit. It also feels like when you get one of those weird games in which the second to last level is the hardest part of the game and then you get to the final boss and you're like, well, that wasn't so bad compared to the, all the other shit we had to go through. Naruto and Sasuke beat the game and the credits start rolling and part of those fucking annoying credits that you have to sit through is watching Kakashi talk one last time to Obito. Now, we all know that Obito is coming back next week, but uh, I would have wanted Obito to just be gone, okay, after being stabbed by Kaguya. Obviously, that didn't happen and it's still kind of disappointing that it didn't, but... If I had to pick a second type of ending, I think this this fits not only his character the best, but also Kakashi's character the best. What I kind of like about it is two things. Number one, Obito still, he knows he fucked up, which is good. That lets us know that at least there's some type of conscious, okay, uh, inside of Obito that makes him feel sorry about what he did. And the way Kishi writes Kakashi in this scene, I thought was really smart because Kakashi's not incriminating Obito but he's not as willingly forgiving as Naruto is like, fuck yeah, you're the coolest guy, believe it, you know, have, have a great time in heaven, no. The best thing out of the scene for me in terms of dialogue is when Kakashi says, you know what, dude, if nothing else, I'm glad that I can say goodbye to you as the person that I once knew, okay, as, as the you that I remembered and that I, I considered my friend. You know, because it's a bittersweet sort of deal. So Obito goes away, Kakashi loses both of his Sharingan, which means it was always supposed to be a temporary power-up. And this kind of justifies the fact that I wasn't really pissed off about the perfect Suzuno. I've said this before, but to me the most problematic thing was Obito coming back from the ashes. After you accept that, uh, the temporary perfect Suzuno, though problematic, it's, it, to me at least it's not that big of a deal as Obito coming back. I love the part where the sage says, Madara became the Jinchuriki, if only for a little while. Now that he has had a tail beast removed from him, he is beyond saving. R really? Let's just keep track of the people that have had a bijou extracted from them, and Kishimoto has found a way to somehow write some type of a way that they, they end up either reviving or surviving. So Gata, Naruto, Kushina... Obito, all of these were Jinchurikis at one point that survived the extraction or came back to life. For crying out loud, the sage, he brought the previous Kages back on some spiritual shit. But when it comes to Madara, he's like, oh, today I feel like being a dick. I don't feel like reviving any more people. But anyway, we knew that Madara had to go. Like some way or another, he had to go. And then, by the way, what happened to the weapons that Ten Ten found that were supposed to be used to seal something or someone? What happened to that? Sasuke says, he knew what he was doing, now he must suffer the consequences, which I totally agree with, which is why he is the best character of the show. Only below Itachi and Hashirama. Two things out of the scene with Madara and Hashirama that I find interesting. One of them is kind of funny, uh, and one of them is pretty cool and important. So the, the thing that I find kind of funny is like, Hashirama's lecturing Madara about like, you should have been able to know that there are things that you can't do by yourself. You should have been more humble and trusted people. And then Madara says, no, that would not have worked out because I always hated people following me from behind. I'm like, Madara, you couldn't get followers. That was the biggest problem you had. That's why you left the village. So I don't know if he was being sarcastic with that. And I think he kind of was because after that, we see Hachirama cracking a smile. So it's kind of like Madara just like, I'm just, I'm just messing with you one last time. So Madara actually admits to the fact that, that Hachirama was probably right about how to handle things, which... In addition to having Sasuke there, because he says, at least, Hashirama, at least your dream lives on. My dream is no more. And immediately we cut to Sasuke, which is incredibly symbolic. Because remember, this, aside from Sasuke, this is the last living Uchiha. Which obviously means that Sasuke is going to be the one to carry on with Madara's dream. Hashirama and Sasuke, two of the best characters of this show. Hashirama being right from the start, according to Madara, this is Madara saying this, and Sasuke being the inheritor and the one who will try to try to do what Madara wanted to accomplish, but doing it the right way. Obviously, the Minato and Naruto scene is supposed to be incredibly emotional. It's a direct reference to the Kushina flashback, 
And uh, there's no father and son hug because then that, that would have just been mad awkward. Did Kishimoto just intentionally blow off Minato's arms so that he wouldn't be able to hug his kid? Does Kishimoto hug his kids? Does he not? Is that what's going on here? Because I'll be honest, I was never hugged as a little boy. That's why it turned out just fine. Did you notice Sakura all over Kakashi? Like, god damn! Naruto starts saying all these Kushina-related things, you know, he's like, Oh, I love my ramen, and I flunk every freaking subject in school. Jiraiya-sensei was the coolest. I made a lot of friends. They cut to Sasuke, and Sasuke's like, Why are you bringing me into this? What the fuck are you talking about? As I'm reading this, I'm thinking to myself, Okay, I know this speech ends up talking about girls at some point, and I'm, I know the fucking bearing fans are like, Holy shit, what's he gonna say? And this is where things get fucking tricky, because if you read the manga stream translation, it's kind of like a herp derp moment. He's like, when it comes to girls, herp derp. But if you read the panda translation, he says, not everything is going just the way mom told me. And I know that my mom told me to find a girl that was kind of like her. Now, if you remember, Minato said immediately when he arrived, this girl, Sakura, reminds me of Kushina. I'll let you put two and two together to realize what that means. I mean, I was like, I, I feel like he's struggling to remember all this shit that Naruto is telling him. So it's like, okay, yeah, I'll tell her everything. And Naruto's, yeah, just tell her I'm doing my best. And he's just really, really, he's crying. And I don't know, I think it's a mixture of both sadness and happiness. The fact that, you know, his parents are proud of him, but at the same time, they're, they're not there with him. So it's a very emotional scene. All the Kages leave. I didn't see Toby Rama go. And I think it'd be pretty hilarious if he'd be standing there in the corner being like, Toby Rama, why didn't you leave? Because I invented the jutsu that brought us back in the first place, bitch. The end is near. It's coming. It's a coming. And I'm gonna tell you one thing, you know, for all the talking about Jutsu that was in this chapter, I thought that was a really, it was a really good chapter. Tell me your thoughts and down in the comment section below. I appreciate the likes, as I always have. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to my channel as we near the finale of Naruto Shippuden, or just, you know, this ninja that won't shut up. <laughs> uh, thanks, guys. Ooh, doo, 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 doo. The sun is rising. Happy birthday, kid.